One of the most vexing and profound open questions within science is what is the process of abiogenesis, the emergence of life from non-living organic chemistry. It remains very much unclear what exactly happened there, to the point that it can't yet be said if the process is a fluke and may have happened only a handful of times in the entire universe, or even only once, or if the process is relatively straightforward and happens everywhere it can, making for a universe likely to be teeming with at least simple life. We currently have two potential ways to solve this mystery. The first is to directly find life independent of Earth. This can happen through searching for microbial life on other solar system bodies such as Mars or Europa, or discovering evidence of biosignatures on exoplanets, or even finding a technosignature of an alien civilization. The second way is to work out the chemical process of abiogenesis in the laboratory. There is work being done on both approaches, however much of it remains a mystery. But if abiogenesis turns out to be a difficult process, then we are faced with yet another mystery. As it stands right now, one of the reasons that it's thought that abiogenesis probably isn't a rare process is because it happened seemingly at the very first possible moment it could here on Earth. There's even some evidence that's still being debated that would place the dawn of life on Earth back into the late heavy bombardment, when Earth had to have been only marginally habitable for life at all. That abiogenesis, if a rare process, happened under those somewhat extreme conditions seems highly unlikely. But that idea also assumes that simple life is isolated to the planet that it arises upon. This may not be the case. It may be that simple life can be transported between planets and seed them, an idea known generally as panspermia, but perhaps more accurately transpermia. It's possible, so far as we know, for microbes to hitch a ride on rocks blasted from planetary surfaces early in the solar system's history and land on other terrestrial objects and seed them if the conditions are right. This leads to an interesting idea to say the least. The idea is that life on Earth did not originate here. This opens up a number of candidates, such as Venus, or even very odd places for life to arise have been advanced, at least to be hypothetically possible such as the seemingly water-rich asteroid Ceres. But one candidate stands out. It's Mars, and very early in that planet's history, it seems to have had more going for it as far as life appearing than Earth did. Mars seems to have offered a series of conditions better for life early in its history than Earth had at the same time. One particularly catastrophic event in Earth's history wasn't just the constant bombardment it was subject to, but also the collision of Earth with Thea, that seems to have formed the moon. These are not ideal conditions for life to arise. Also, while Mars had liquid water oceans at the time, the amount of water in them was less than Earth. This would have lessened the effect of steam blanketing the planets along with dust during impacts. Another is that Mars, being smaller, cooled faster than Earth, which would have allowed for a subsurface environment for microbes avoiding the surface during impacts much earlier than Earth had it. All of this points to Mars potentially being habitable as far back as 4.5 billion years ago, shortly after the formation of the solar system, as opposed to Earth's 3.8 billion year limit on how early life seems to have appeared. And then there are questions about both environments. One would be what life had available to it when it started up. It would have needed nutrients. But in a stagnant, isolated tidal pool on Earth, this might have been a problem given that life would tend to consume all the nutrients in the pool and then die off. So wherever it happened presumably wasn't very isolated. Also, the very earliest life would not have had the time needed to develop the robust adaptations of later life to its environment. In other words, it would have very likely have been extremely delicate. Earth, during the late heavy bombardment, does not seem like an environment for the delicate. Life also needs to expand into other niches to survive. But if that niche where life arose was somehow special and presented very specific circumstances that allowed for the magic to happen, is it very likely that other nearby niches would be colonizable to such delicate emergent life? And how does that change? Do certain processes require drier conditions to favor the needed chemistry? Or do wetter environments offer advantages? 
and how do exposure to the two fit together? This leads to a huge question, but one that might be revealing in itself. Does abiogenesis have to happen many times on a world just to get it right? If so, then that would imply that the process is generally easy if a certain group of long-term conditions are met, or that the conditions for it are very rare on exoplanets, but occasionally do happen, and when they do, they tend to last a long while to allow for multiple instances of life appearing to stick. But this leads to another question. If Earth had the conditions necessary for life to arise, does it still have them while supporting life? If so, then we should see evidence of many distinct appearances of life on Earth. So far, we have not seen this. It appears to have only happened once. Why this is, or if life itself prevents other life from arising, is unknown. And it's also possible that life is rare, but inherently resilient. And once it gets going, it becomes increasingly difficult to snuff it out if it gets past a certain stage of growth. This opens up the possibility that a rock from Earth could have acted as an arc, where life was ejected from the planet into space and went extinct on Earth, only to be redeposited back on it later when the life-bearing meteorite fell back on the planet after some period in space while the planet recovered from the impact. But within all of this is one interesting point that's been raised. In a paper by Paul Davies, link below, he details that if life is indeed rare in the universe, and given the past conditions of both Earth and Mars when life appeared on Earth, then it may actually be that Mars is significantly, six or more times, likely to be the place of origin for life in the solar system than Earth is, in which case our origin very likely becomes Mars. The last question in all of this widens the scope. Is it possible that life in the star system may not have started here at all? After all, the possibility of panspermia does sometimes include life crossing interstellar distances and being deposited here from another star system. This issue has one problem. Crossing the interstellar medium is hard, and it takes a very long time. It would have to have been life far more special than what we have here to be able to survive it, except in one scenario. The solar system has passed very closely to other star systems many times over its history, most of which we will never know ever happened. It's essentially impossible to reconstruct what star passed by the sun when beyond a certain point in time, and anything from 3.8 billion years ago or longer is lost information. So if life was deposited here from a passing star system, perhaps undergoing impacts of its own, we will likely never know it happened that way if indeed it did, but it remains a possibility. Thanks for listening. I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently worried about interplanetary microbe relations. If the solar system teems with life, it's likely to be largely microbial, even if other macrofauna are found off Earth in the ocean of an ice shell moon. And it's true here. Earth can be described as a microbial planet that has some other complex life living on it, but the microbes rule, and they may rule the solar system. What if they interact and don't get along? We're at their mercy, and be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channels for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.